Welcome to the Electronic Church of God of Arizona and the Lord's Care Ministry. Today is April 8th, the first work day of the week that we like to call a Sunday or Day of the Sun. Now our pagans use this as a call an Easter. They're worshiping the pagan sun god. A Vestar, two different languages. It's the sun god that said that maybe they got about a hundred breasts on her. We could go to, I believe it is, Corinthians, and you'll see where the men got all worked up because the apostles come in, the apostle come in there and wanted to get rid of all these here people that made these. Sun God, golden sun God of Estar. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into the Lord's care ministry. A year to search for knowledge and truth. Day 99 of the year 2012. Today's study, His Resurrection Destiny. His Resurrection Destiny. Brethren, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down that we give you so that you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. You can use the pause button down here in the corner, brother, to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you'll be able to open up your own Bible, read chapter and verse right along with us. Well, with that, let's get into his resurrection destiny. And to do that, we're going to go to Luke chapter 24 and starting in verse 26. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? Our Lord's stake is the gateway into his life. His resurrection means that he has the power to convey his life to me. When I became a begotten son of God the Father, I received the very life of the risen Lord from Jesus himself. Christ's resurrection destiny. He, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10. His foreordained purpose was to bring many sons to glory. The fulfilling of his destiny gives Jesus the right to make us sons and daughters of God the Father. We never have exactly the same relationship to God that the Son of God has, but we are brought by the Son into the relationship of sonship. When our Lord rose from the dead, he rose to an absolutely new life. He rose to a life that had never been before. And what his resurrection means for us is that we are raised into his risen life, not to our old life. One day we will have a body like his glorious body. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 we can read, But we can know here and now, the power and the effectiveness of his resurrection and can walk in newness of life. Paul's determined purpose was to know him and the power of his resurrection. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Jesus prayed in John 17 and verse 2, As you have given him authority over all, flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. The term Holy Spirit is actually another name for the experience of eternal life working in human beings here and now. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God who continues to apply the power of the atonement by the stake of Christ to our lives. Thank God for the glorious and majestic truth that his spirit can work in the very nature of Jesus into us if we only obey him. 
may I not be satisfied with talking or muzzling on your love. Grant me the grace to manifest it, not only in great crisis, but amid petty annoyances and daily worries. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14 we read, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God, the Father's only Son, in John chapter 11, verse 27, I believe thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Brethren, are you celebrating Easter? Are you having your kids going out and look for these Easter eggs that the bunny supposedly raised? But you know, you had to put them there. In other words, you're lying to your child. It's an outright lie. No bunnies ever, ever laid any eggs. They put that in a long time ago because rabbits are very prolific. It's a sex doctor. Easter is a sex goddess, a star. And I could give you many names for her, but Easter, a star, that's what you're worshiping, some sex goddess. The sex goddess of Nimrod. Go back in your Bible and you'll find that out to be the truth. Some Marinus, put that on after Nimrod died. Brethren, check it out. Quit lying to yourself and to your children. They'd appreciate it much later. Brethren, if you want to see the Father and the Son, get down on your knees and repent. Repent, re repent, repent of following this horrid tradition of men. Or oh, you say it's a lot of fun. Satan makes it a lot of fun as he does at Christmas and Halloween. You're just, he's leading the, you on that broad path to destruction. I don't say that. Your Bible says that. Go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. You get tired of me giving you that chapter? Well, you have to start out there and follow through because in the same chapter, Matthew chapter 7, verses 17 through 21, he tells you, all you people that say going after the Easter bunny and saying, Lord, Lord, look what I've done. But go to verse 21. He says, get away from you who work iniquity. That iniquity is lawlessness. Following the tradition of men is lawlessness. And he won't have nothing to do with you. He says, I don't hear you. Get away from me. Brethren, on your knees when you're asking the Father and the Son to come into you to give you the truth and drive away all doubt and strengthen your faith. Also ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of that love letter that the Lord has given to you from the end to the amen of your Bible. Brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.